You're on the Bible form. I'm Warren Sprouse. I got a question for you. When is it good to ignore a police request? The grand jury decision is in on the Louisville, Kentucky police case. They're finding the officers knocked on the door. The man inside fired through the door, striking a police officer in the leg. The police on the outside of the door then opened fire on whomever was on the other side of that door. Question. Would you stand in a hallway and fire a gun through a closed door? Would you not consider that whoever was on the other side might return fire? What if you were the girlfriend? Would you stand by your man as he fired at that door, knowing there could possibly be a returning gunfire? And if you were the girlfriend, would you not know your boyfriend was either dealing drugs or helping somebody who did? It's coming in and out of your apartment. The Louisville Metropolitan Police Department investigation was centered on two men suspecting, suspected of selling drugs in a Russell neighborhood house on Elliott Avenue. You've heard about this. More than 10 miles from Taylor's apartment in southwest Jefferson County. But the search warrant the officers executed just before 1 a.m. March 13 did include Taylor's home which police suspected was used to receive drugs. A judge signed off on what is called a no-knock provision that allowed police to enter Taylor's home without identifying themselves as members of law enforcement. They could just break their way in. But Louisville police say that despite the no-knock warrant, they did identify themselves before using a battering ram to enter the residence where Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, were in bed. Walker and Taylor believed someone was breaking into their home. It prompted Walker to fire his gun in self-defense, hitting one of the officers. The question is why police entered Taylor's home in the early morning hours in the first place. Well, they knew this man was there and he was involved in dealing drugs, as it turned out. Secondly, the police believed the man used this girl's apartment to store drugs, stash money from the drug sales. Thirdly, in an affidavit summarizing the investigation that led to the search warrant, Detective Joshua James said a man named Glover was seen walking into Taylor's apartment one January afternoon, leaving with a suspected USPS package in his right hand. He then got into his car, drove to a known drug house on Muhammad Ali Boulevard, and Detective James verified through a U.S. Postal Inspector, according to an affidavit, that Glover had been receiving packages like that at Taylor's address for some time. Now, what really happened? Records obtained by the Courier-Journal show the search warrant signed by the judge a day before Taylor's death included Taylor's address based on police belief that one of the main narcotics investigation suspects, this Jamarcus Glover, used her home, Taylor's home, to receive mail, keep drugs, or stash money earned from sale of drugs. Taylor had no criminal history. Walker had no felony charges before the night of the shooting and no drugs were found in Taylor's apartment. Reports indicate that officers had a no-knock warrant, but chose to knock anyway. A destructive situation, as it turned out. When there was no answer after repeated knocks, Mattingly said he announced he was a police officer there to serve a warrant. He said, police, come to the door. Another officer on the search team said he heard movement inside and thought someone was about to answer the door. That's apparently when the shot was fired through the door from the inside. Mattingly said, we kept banging and announcing, and no one answered. The police officer was accused by his own department of blindly firing 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment from an outdoor patio. He has since been fired 
and is appealing his termination. Eventually, a lieutenant at the scene gave the order to go ahead and hit the door with a battering ram. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, grand jury judge, said, according to Cameron, a witness said officers both knocked and announced their presence before they raided Taylor's home, meaning the warrant was not served as a no-knock. They did so out of respect. He said when no one answered, officers breached the door, meaning they used a battering ram to knock it open. Their search was linked to a drug investigation. Mattingly said he was the only officer to enter the apartment. He said Kenneth Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, fired a shot that hit Mattingly, apparently in the leg. Officers returned fire and six bullets hit Taylor, one of which was fatal. Walker, a licensed gun owner, has said the police did not announce themselves and that he fired in self-defense because he thought someone was breaking in. Officer Hankinson fired 10 shots from outside with some bullets hitting the neighboring apartment where there was a man, a child, and a pregnant woman. None of his bullets struck Taylor. The charges allege Harkin Hankinson endangered Taylor's neighbors, but Cameron and Mattingly and Cosgrove were jailed in their use of force when they opened fire because Walker had fired his gun. According to Kentucky law, the use of force by Mattingly and Cosgrove was justified to protect themselves. This justification bars us, they said, from pursuing criminal charges in Miss Breonna Taylor's death. Mattingly fired six times. Cosgrove fired 16 times. Cameron said two different ballistics reports with differing conclusions left it unclear which officer fired the shot that killed Taylor. Cameron said none of the three officers were involved in obtaining the search off warrant, which was linked to a drug investigation into Taylor's ex-boyfriend, who did not live there, meaning they were simply chosen to accompany the detective. No drugs were found in Taylor's home. The warrant is under review as part of a federal investigation. The result? Demonstrations in the street against the system. The family of slain Breonna Taylor are outraged at the police. I would be as well if it were my daughter. However, the old adage says when you lie down with dogs, you're probably going to get up with fleas. And Miss Breonna let that man into her life and into her bed. He was basically living there and had been long enough for detectives to map out his movements and conclude he was either dealing drugs or helping those who did. It's a sad ending all the way around. A no-win ending. Not because the police showed up and killed somebody, but because these young people were dealing drugs or thought they could hang around people who were dealing drugs or the, they could use my apartment to store to receive the packages through the mail so that you know, they thought, well, it's not a, a subculture where these events made perfect sense to them. I find that amazing. 